This video will be useful to those who recently registered in the Linkbox service and do not know what to start with. I propose to start by thinking about how to split backlinks into separate link campaigns within each project. I'm sure that each of the experienced specialists has already answered this question for himself, but will offer his own option. I think it agrees with most. This is by type of link and by source. Therefore, we can analyze in the future the activity of these types and sources. So after we answer this question, we need to create our link campaigns exactly as much as our separation will require. Click on Create a campaign, type the project name, domain, campaign name and create. Thus both the campaign and the project are created. Many campaigns are tied to each project. Given that in our case it's necessary to create three campaigns, we will create other campaigns. To do this, simply select an existing project, select projects from the list and name the campaign, then create, and the second campaign is also added to this project. So we already get all the separation we need, and we need to import our backlinks into each campaign. To do this, click Import, type URL links into a field or load a file, and click Confirm. So we do for each link campaign and get a complete list of our links. After this is done, I suggest immediately importing data from the Google Search Console. To do this, we select the Links tab, select Export External Links, and select the last links. And we need to upload the resulting file into Linkbox. To do this, go to the crawlers, upload the file to the console, and if everything is done correctly, we get such a schedule. The graph is the Dynamics of Link Search Google Search Console. In order to evaluate the smoothness of link building, for example, here we see a candle 98 links in one day. This happened because we experimented with our URL and overdid it a bit. But in general, if you do everything correctly, the schedule is usually smooth because the search engine processes the links gradually and to get a candle, you have to try hard. We'll not dwell on this window. There is some set of filters that you can use for detailed analysis but the main work is on the Project tab. So we go to the tab and proceed to the actual action. The first thing that starts with any project is the Check Links action. Select it, press Start. I have completed the action. You can track its status and task's history. So after the action is completed, we will be able to filter based on the data received from the section, by the presence of a link, by the response code and by the availability for indexing. We will not consider in this video how to work with those links that were deleted, were blocked from indexing or the page was deleted with a link. This is also very important, but you must answer these questions yourself. What to do with the link like that? For example, was deleted or replaced, or write to the webmaster and demand that he restore this link. In this video, we'll consider the basic sequence of actions for those links that are working in relevant. To do this, we select the status of availability, contains a link to our website, select the response code 200 and click filter. So we get a list of 133 links that are really relevant and that could affect our project if they were in the index. And to find out whether they are in the index or not, perform the following action. Check the indexing of links, press Start. After completion of the action, we are able to filter by indexation status. We select Not in the index. Click on Filter and see that 35 links are not indexed by the search engine. Hence, it's a good idea to fix this and apply Google Ad Journal to them. Press Start and the action ends. After using Adjural, it's very important that the indexing check must be started manually. 
therefore wait a couple of days for the Ajural to work and Google Cloud index them. Select Check Indexing, press Start, and it will get some data on which links are indexed and which are not, in order to check only the links that were added to the search engine. Select the Added to Ajural status. It's very convenient. I would like to dwell in more detail on what the correct sequence of action is for you to remember exactly. First, we check the links, then check the indexing and index only what is really relevant and not in the index. Firstly, it saves money and secondly, it allows you not to index what was deleted because the search engine may just not know about it. It may still take into account for your project the links that were deleted. But here you do add URL for them and tell the search engine not to consider these links. This way you can only make your project worse. It's clear that these links will drop out over time. But why speed things up? Therefore, this is the most correct sequence of actions. So let's now move to the last section. This is the anchor list. Here we'll just use the console data. We will filter by the console and by the do follow attribute. Click filter. We get a list of do follow links that are taken into account by the console and get their anchors. It's very cool to, for example, export and combine data on working anchors with the position of our site on these anchors and not just connect, but also track future dynamics. Therefore, some new links come in or the old ones disappear. And we'll look at how this affects the position, because with a high probability, you will see a pattern that as soon as new, especially high quality links come in, the position immediately grows. Therefore, you analyze only those links that Google really takes into account and looks at the dynamic. Thus, you can increase the effectiveness of your promotion because, for example, try to diversify the anchor sheet and not put a bunch of identical anchors word for word that the search engine can partially or fully glue, as it was in this case. It'll be very useful to keep track of important anchors that simply should not fall out. Otherwise, you'll go through the important keys that bring you traffic. Definitely, if you are in the first place, then some kind of traffic comes to you. So it will be very useful. Another way to use this is to track the performance of various link campaigns. Because we divide it correctly to compare them with each other, we select the first performer by crowd. We select the filter and we see that only 9 anchors are really taken into account by the search system. Although there are about 50 links, the rest are extras that well will not affect our link promotion. It will just create naturalness and dilute our anchors, but this is only if these links are in the console. Because this is a very common mistake when people think that they put 100 crowd links and all these 100 links are taken into account by the search engine. But even if they are indexed by a search engine, it's not a fact that they will get into the console, because Google works in steps and it doesn't take into account all indexed links. I think all experienced professionals know it, but few really check it. So let's move on to the second performer. Click on the filter and see that it has just 7 working anchors. But there are more than 20 links in total. We pay the second performer for the specific link posted. He's much more appropriate because although he puts fewer links, they work better, so it will be more profitable. In general, in order to use the anchor list, you must firstly regularly check these links to analyze relevant data and secondly, regularly download data from the console. If you control your link campaigns, then you will have a stable result from the promotion. And not that one project has been promoted, that the other has failed, and it's not clear why. I think that it'll be useful to any SEO specialist. I would like to say that not all functions were considered in this video, but only the most basic. I'm sure that you'll find many more applications for Linkbox functionality in order to maximize the result of link promotion. 
I hope this video was useful to you.